Now we're going to dive deep on Kinesis Video. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself and say what your role is here at Amazon. And uh, awesome. tell us a little bit more about Kinesis Video, kind of at a high level. Wonderful. My name's Adi, and I manage the Kinesis Video Stream service, which means I have an amazing team of engineers that I get to work with every day to build the service and operate it in the wild. Uh, Kinesis Video Streams was launched at reInvent this past just four months ago. And our service aims to make it ridiculously simple for developers to connect and stream media, broadly speaking, video, audio, or other time encoded data types securely into AWS so that then they can build the kinds of applications that delight their customers and their users. And more specifically, the kinds of applications that we hope that we can help developers build are those that are based of machine learning algorithms that can analyze audio, video, and even image and other kinds of data. That's really cool. Uh, when you say time encoded data, when you say like any kind of data, yeah. is, it, is it basically anything that fits in an MKV? That, that is, the, is the perfect summary. That's the perfect summary. Uh, so but you could you can, do like telemetry, radar, uh, infrared, video. Oh. That, that's, that's exactly right. And what we notice about these data types is that there are two big properties. Number one, there is notional dependency of the individual frames of data, if you will. Uh, so the frame that came before it or the frame that comes after it. And secondly, there is time is a core first class citizen. And that relationship over time is very important for it to be preserved. And lastly, what we learned was that there is a notion of cadence. So it's not just discrete records or packets, but the fact that, that there is a dependency again on how timely a given record arrives compared to the previous one. Interesting. So what have you seen customers building on top of this already? So, so the first set of use cases that we saw were customers literally picking up Raspberry Pis using our, some of our pre-built SDKs uh, to, stream, stream that, uh, to stream the video out and build things like people counting, people counting algorithms. So, so for a conference like this, the AWS Summit, you would be able to say you know, how many people have walked through so far today. Exactly right. Uh, they could do things like face recognition, uh, especially with, with what we have with recognition video. That's, so that's recognition video, for those of you who aren't aware, is a service where we can input video data and Kinesis Video Streams is an input source for that. That's exactly right. Uh, and it can infer things, not just about the individual frames, which is what uh, a, a lot of typical video recognition software does, it actually infers things based on the time. So it can identify verbs, things that you can only identify by taking multiple frames simultaneously uh, as part of your, your inference. So right. it can identify verbs like running, walking, bicycling, things like that. That's exactly right. Uh, so activities, objects, gestures, all of these are, are kinds of activities, uh, uh, entities that can be detected now in real time. So, and so with that as a building block, you can go make amazing applications. So we have customers who are trying to build uh, smart retail applications, they're doing crowd management applications, uh, they're building uh, uh, more, more whimsical things as well. Uh, they want to understand, uh, automatically count on, in, a, in a high school football field the number of successful passes that were made. Wow, that's uh, and, really cool. And, and the, the cool thing is now, uh, with, with, the, with the technology components, the, the technology barriers have become so much lower. Well, I, I mean, anybody can really get started with this. You don't have to be you know, a fortune. What, one of the things that I absolutely love about AWS, and, and, and it's one of the reasons I love working here, is we take this kind of technology that used to only be accessible to these Fortune 50 or Fortune 10 companies with billion dollar budgets, and we democratize it. We put it in the hands of every single developer. Mm -hmm. uh, so long as you're willing to read the docs and, and play around with the service, you, know, you can build the same thing that a Fortune 10 company could. That's, that's exactly right. And, and to add to just one more thing, um, recently, uh, Amazon Go became a public store, oh, as right. you know. And uh, one of the things that, that we we're, were able to share is that Amazon Go uses Kinesis Video Streams as its core video pipeline, on which, of course, they've built amazing applications to deliver that delightful experience. So but the key thing is, is that now they can build those experiences without investing any effort in the ingestion, in the infrastructure. That's crazy cool. It I is. mean, it's. <laughs> I, I have not had the opportunity to go to the Amazon Go store myself yet, but I've yeah. seen uh, the commercial, it's really funny. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, this is a store where you scan your phone when you go in and then you never check out. You never, you, you know, you pick up whatever items you want off the shelf, uh, you can put them back, uh, everything is kind of automated and it's, it it's 
got algorithms that are kind of eventually consistent that charge you when you're when you're leaving yeah. the store. That's right. Uh, and you everything. just walk out, right? It feels like it's stealing things. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> Uh, and there's this really great commercial where uh, there's a, a woman who's trying to decide whether or not she's going to eat the muffin. Yep. And I like, I've, I'm so proud every time when the person goes back for the muffin and grabs it. It's, yeah. it's like a great commercial. <laughs> so uh, I, I've had the opportunity to like play around with um, uh, Kinesis Video, and I, I've, I've enjoyed kind of the C++ and Java SDKs, just mm -hmm. sort of building cool stuff with that. But uh, how do customers, you know, get started? How do they, how do they, you know? Do they download the SDK? Do they have to be whitelisted? Is there any sort of preview? Or is this in production? Like, how, how does it all work? Like, what's the best okay. way for a customer to get started? So, so the service is generally available across five regions worldwide. Awesome. Uh, it's there for anybody to play, use, experiment with for their production needs today. Uh, it's been so for the last four months. How do you get started? Mentally, there are three big blocks. There is a producer. This is your source that generates the media. For example, video. The middle block is Kinesis Video. This reliably accepts your streams, it can durably store your streams, it will index that data, and then it presents the data on our GET APIs. The third canonical block is a consuming application. This could be a recognition video stream processor, or it could be something you build yourself. For example, maybe you build a real-time transcoding application that converts the media into, let's say, an HLS format for playback. Or maybe you use some of our latest uh, deep learning technologies and build your own feature recognition algorithm for your specific use case. Perhaps you want to count the number of people not wearing a hard hat on a construction site. Wow, yeah, I mean, I, just the number of possibilities is huge. It's, it's huge. So uh, there's one thing you said there that kind of um, interests me, which is you say you can index into this data and you have Git APIs. So with indexes, I assume that means you can do some sort of search functionality into the individual video or some sort of like a time index section. So I can say at any point in time, like let me get back just this time encoded section? That's, that's exactly right. Well, so that's pretty spectacular. <laughs> How? <laughs> How, yeah, so, so, so I'm glad you asked. So looking at the, at the internals of the system, there is a fundamental lexeme, the unit of data, is a fragment. Okay. This is a self-contained set of frames. If you will, this is the stuff that you should be able to just double click on and have VLC player just play for you. Right. right? It could be abrupt beginning, abrupt end, but it should just play and not throw up. Okay. Right. So this is a fragment, and the producer will go ahead and generate a streamable version of this fragment and assign to it specific metadata, such as the producer timestamp, and, and any other set of tags that the developer can then configure into the producer SDK. Now, as that media flows into Kinesis Video on the cloud side, we also affix a service side timestamp. Oh, wow. So now, on every fragment that is successfully flowing into the system, we have an understanding of the time it was created, the producer side timestamp, and when we received it on the service side timestamp. And as these billions of fragments are flowing in, we build out a time index that will allow a developer using a get media API to say, I want to retrieve media starting time T1. Or they can say, I want to retrieve media starting now, which is the latest. Or they can say, I want to retrieve media using the earliest point in time that it was, was ever stored. Or they could say, I want to play back media from time T1 to T2 in the past, and all these capabilities are just baked into the GET API. And are there any other kind of annotations or things like that that you can put into the data? So like, let's say I have thousands of, of different devices that are streaming in. Can I select from individual streams? Yes, you may. So there is a stream level tagging capability that is available to customers. So for example, uh, let's say you're building a security system for a parking lot and you have a dozen cameras, some are indoors, some are outdoors, some are on floor one, two, three, and four. And for each of these streams, you can say, tag it as you know, location indoor or location outdoor. You can tag it as you know, floor, floor number one. So through these key value pairs, you can define effectively tags on your stream. And the cool thing is, then you can use a get resource manager API to wow. drill down into the streams of most interest before executing your get media call. 
that's really, really cool. And I, I wanted to say, anybody on the stream, you know, if you have any questions, you, you have the expert available. This is your opportunity to learn as much as you ever wanted to know about Kinesis video streams. And we, we very much welcome your questions. So just please, any, anything you want to know, you have like three or four more minutes to get those questions in, and I'll, I'll happily relay them to you. Um, I have a question, which yeah. is, you know, what sort of scale can this support? Like, how many, how many devices can I have, you know, streaming into this? You could have a lot of devices streaming into <laughs> a <lot>. this. <laughs> a lot. So For some number N. <laughs> so for some uh, uh, relatively large number N. So the key thing is that when we uh, roll out a service in GA, so which is broadly available for customers, we have to make sure that we have scale tested to several months to years out of what we want to support. Right. For our customers. And especially in, in all five regions. Especially in all five regions, and knowing well that you could have all it takes is one hit application running on the Android smartphone platform, and suddenly you can have millions of simultaneous streams. Wow. So while we always have reasonable soft limits on things like number of streams allowed, uh, they are all, uh, customers can request service limit increases just through our, through our console, and we're happy to grant them. So those limits are typically not, they're kind of like prevent yourself from shooting yourself in the foot kind of limits. So if you, if you accidentally write something wrong, Lambda has the same sort of setup where yeah. you know, your, your default concurrency is mm -hmm. limited to 1,000 concurrent functions, and it's not, it's not a limitation of, of Lambda, it's a limitation to prevent you from getting either an unexpected bill or from having something that's a runaway function kind of you know, causing you uh, issues. Th that's exactly the intent. So, uh, y you know, you can bring in all of these, these MKV data. MKV, for those of you who aren't aware, is a, a Matryoshka format. It's named after those Russian dolls. Yeah. So it's an encapsulation format. So it's basically individual like video frame packets or other kind of packets that's that are right. encoded and time encoded, and you kind of put them in smaller and smaller MKV sections. So I, I'm just curious, like, this is, this is really complex, cool stuff that, that you have mentioned does scale quite large. Like, how does it, <laughs> can you tell me how it works? Like, what's the secret sauce? Like, how, how are you able to, to take all of this incoming data and, and make it searchable and indexable for however long a customer wants it? The short answer is that from a Kinesis team's perspective, for those of you who don't know, uh, we've been dealing with streaming systems for several years now. And essentially, this is just more streaming data. At the highest level, that's exactly it. And of course, we've been very lucky in having workloads uh, like Amazon Go that we've had to work with internally for several years. Right. And that gives us kind of the, uh, the, the confidence that the infrastructure that we're building, that the system software that we've built, that the durability systems we're building will, will, will scale and will do, do their job well. This is so cool. Uh, are there anything anything you can share in the pipeline in the roadmap? I know typically it's AWS. You know, we we listen to customer feedback and we typically don't comment on our public roadmap. But you know, this is Twitch. Could you share anything cool? Anything exciting? In general terms, what we're going to do in the next few months is make it easier for an even broader class of devices to easily stream into Kinesis Video. So you know, this might take uh, various forms, uh, integration into existing established industry plugins. It could be support for OS platforms, support for language platforms. All of these are on the table that we're going to deliver. I vote for Python. <laughs> You've been heard. Uh, and uh, the, the second big thing we're going to do is make playback of the video across any number of devices as easy as one simple API call. So that you can just Way have cool. in your Exo player in Android, JW player, uh, video.js player, and just be able to play that back. On a web page. Seamlessly. On a web page way, with way no cool. setup. Um, I want to thank you for coming on today. Again, Kinesis is blowing me away with the, the pace of innovation that they're displaying. So I, I hope you guys keep it up, and I hope we get a chance to chat again at reInvent. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for coming Thanks. on. Thank you.